Welcome to Shadow of Truth with your host Dave Pranzler from InvestmentResearchDynamics.com and Rory Hall from TheDailyCoin.org. And we have a very special program for you today. What happened on Tuesday, March the 3rd, is there wasn't any real pressing news stories, and we found ourselves in the middle of a conversation about bail-ins and bailouts, and it really turned into a great session. And so we decided to record it, and you are going to be the beneficiaries of that conversation. So I hope that you learned something, and I hope that you share this with some of your friends and family, because it really is great information about what is coming, what is happening, and how it will impact you and your bank account. These criminals that are that are dictating everything that's going on in our world. I was telling my wife uh, this morning, you know, that it says in the Bible that the, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. And no truer words have ever been spoken, in my opinion. And if you look at what these criminal bankers are doing right now, they are the evil that we have to deal with. And Sean says it all the time. You know that that oh, yeah, us absolutely. against the bankers. Absolutely. I mean, and they are they are the they are the reason that everything is backwards and jacked up in our entire world. Period. They are the reason. And until people can wrap their brains around that and get on board with that idea, then it's not going to matter because the they, they won't care. And just like what you were saying, as far as, you know, these guys have been for the last 20 years have been sucking the system dry. And Obamacare is a prime example. Obamacare is nothing but a bail in. It's a backdoor uh, hijacking of our finances, period. That's all that it is. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. And it's a very thin bail that it's, that it's hiding behind. They couldn't. They knew that the that the American people were not going to put up with the words bail bailout again. And the insurance companies are completely. In, they are as insolvent as the too big to jail banks. They are completely insolvent. And because of the derivatives, because of everything that happened back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, they were they had their hands all over it. All of their money was in that casino, and that casino is now closed. So they are, as, they are as broke and as insolvent as the banks, and the only way that they could get any money out of the American people was to force them to do it, and that's to do it at gunpoint, and we'll call it Obamacare. Or as Gerald Salente says, the white shoe boy language, the Affordable Care Act. It's such an Orwellian label. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's just disgusting that people that have their 401k and their IRAs in their companies and in their bank are going to wake up one morning and it's going to be unannounced, unknown, unforeseen, and their accounts will be transferred into bonds, treasuries. Oh, well, there's no, I actually wrote an article about that. On my old blog, I don't know, maybe three years ago, they, they've already they, they they're gonna the federal government is gonna take over the retirement system and they're because they've already talked about um after the last stock market crash there was a, you know they, they were all it gave them an excuse to say hey we need to. We need to make people's retirement accounts safe, and the only the best way to do that is to is to give them annuitized treasuries. And they've already they've already had symposiums in Congress where they've had where they've had people come in and give presentations about how to how to convert the IRA, you know, how and why to convert the 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 four hundred one k the whole retirement system into a system that is that is funded with treasuries and annuitized. So rather than having a big portfolio of stocks, they swap you out for for treasuries 
you know, and, and a guaranteed annuity. It'd be just another version of Social Security. They give you, it'd be a way, you know, they, they give you a, an annuitized stream of treasuries, and that would be your payments. And it's just another way to fund government debt. Which is the, the important part. Right. But I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily a bail-in per se. The bail-in really applies more to the, to the private sector banks. If I mean, it is, it is, I guess you could generically say it's a bail-in because it's a bail-in of the U.S. government by the people. But, but we, you know, theoretically, we're just bailing out ourselves rather than, than bailing out banks. I mean, what they're, the bail-in is really what that does is it, it puts the creditors to a bank at risk for the risks the bank's taking. And technically, a depositor is a creditor. Your, your, your deposit is the bank's liability. And, and, and so, right. so and instead of the government doing a TARP program and bailing out the banks with taxpayer money, the creditors to the bank, including the depositors, get, re get restructured into a new bank where they get worthless equity. You basically lose all your money that's in the bank that's not guaranteed, that doesn't fall under government guarantee. So, if you're in a bank that goes tits up, and you have 120 thousand in there, and the go and the and the FDIC yeah, insurance is only for 100 thousand, your your 20 thousand is at risk. And you're assuming, of course, that the FDIC actually has the funds. Well, they the don't, and they and they again, don't. it's stupid because it, it's exactly. still going to require taxpayer bailout of FDIC. <laughs> it's all it's all just one gigantic Ponzi scheme. The Myra is the first step towards the government tapping the retirement assets to fund the government debt. Yes, because and, and I knew I, I said this. I said this like in two thousand and three. I said they're going to hold up our system with printed money until the elitists have swept every last crumb of middle class wealth off the table and into their pockets. And after housing goes. The last thing that'll be left is the retirement asset base, and they'll start going after that. And Myra is a step in that direction. Right. And they've been working on it for at least eight years now. Well, the, when, minimum. Right around the time Obama was getting elected, that's when they that's when they held a big symposium in Congress about you know what it would look like. And how they would go about converting the retirement base into a treasury funding mechanism under the under the guise of we want to reduce the volatility of people's retirement risks. So what better way to do it than risk free treasuries? Just confiscation is all it is. Yep, exactly. Plain and simple. Yep. Do you think people care about bail ins or bailouts, Dave? They won't care about it until it threatens them. Now we could Well the see, and that's the problem. Because there's not going to be a forewarning. There will be no warning. They will wake up and it will have happened. There's not going to be. Well, I agree. I agree. But I think we're a ways away from that. I don't. I think that the, I think they're freaking terrified at this point. Well, that could be. But they, they still seem to be able to keep this system propped up. I mean, the S&P is getting hit right now. But I bet you, I bet you they save it. Ooh, it's down 16 now. But the thing is, is that they can do with that whatever they want. That's merely a robot sitting over in the corner and being fed information that says, you know, go up 16, go down 16, move this way, move that way. That's all that is. That's just a picture show. It's no different than, than going down to the theater and watching a movie. In my opinion, I mean, it doesn't have anything to do. To Explain to me the connection between the Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ to reality. Oh, there's none. Okay, so, so it's a picture show. So it really has nothing to do with what's actually happening as far as, the, as, far as what we were talking about in regards to the bail-ins and the siphoning off of the, of the retirement funds. They're not connected. So as far as people being able to see what's happening, they're not going to see it. There's not going to be a warning. There's no warning. All the, and just like what you said a minute ago, as far as gold, the you know, and being so upset about 
uh, gold and silver uh, thermometer being broken. And those are nothing more. Gold is nothing more than a measurement of health of, a, of an economy. And that is now broken permanently. So there is no measurement of health in our economy. So if you have no measurement of health in our economy, then the, and the currency is corrupted, then how in the, how in the world can any of, these market, any of these equity markets be any kind of indicator to anything except Well, they're not. It's just fantasy. an indicator of how much control they have over the markets. Right, which is my point as far as there's, there's no warning. There's not going to be any warning. Yeah. There's not. I mean, because you can't look at the S&P and go, well, the S&P is doing this or it's doing that. That's not any indication. It's like watching The Wizard of Oz and saying, well, bankers are bad. Dorothy <laughs> is good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's a good point. Dude, so, you're so I mean, cynical, man. Well, These criminals make me that way. <laughs> Just looking at their at the way that they do things. That's how they do it. Ask, ask the people of Cyprus what kind of warning they got. Yeah, that's true. You know, they woke up Monday morning. Their banks were closed. That's it. They're done. Two weeks later, what was it, like 60% of their wealth was transferred out of their account? Yeah. Something like that. I forget the numbers, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was between 40 and 60%. However much it was, it's too much. It's called theft. If I were to go down to the... Down well, to the, you, here's the thing, though, Rory. I mean, it's a fine line. I mean, technically, it's not theft. <laughs> technically, it would be theft from the taxpayers if the taxpayers were forced to, to bail out the banks and the creditors were held intact. The depositors, <laughs> everyone should know that, but no one does, and it's a secret. They, they hide it from you, and it's deceptive. But if we're going to have capitalism and democracy, everyone's got to take responsibility for, for what they do. And, and taking responsibility for what you do means understanding that when you give your money to a bank, you become a creditor to that bank. It's a liability. There's There's been huge moral hazard legislated into the system by things like FDIC insurance and government guarantees. And that's what's made the system, that's part of what's contributed to making the system so dangerous and making the system so that it doesn't function properly without a lot of intervention. If, if, if everyone knew, if everyone was educated, and everyone's offered an opportunity to get educated in this country, if everyone understood that when they put their money in a bank, they become a creditor to that bank, it would make people think twice about how much money they keep in a bank. And it would, it, it would impose market discipline on these banks in terms of how they invest their money. The reason these banks blow up is because they take creditor money, which includes depositors, and they invest it recklessly into derivatives, into realist, risky real estate, risky mortgages. I mean, you got banks now that are offering basically really subprime crap mortgages, the same kind of crap that was that was being issued by Countrywide and Wash Mutual and, and Wachovia. It's the stuff that blew these banks up. It's the stuff that blew up Bear Stearns. Banks are doing that again. Yes. And, but they wouldn't be able to do that if depositors knew that they were going to be on the hook for the mistakes that the bank management makes. So in other words, if depositors say, okay, I'm not putting my money in that bank, the, bank, the management takes too much risk. It would, it would, it would impose a, a market discipline on the people running these banks so that they acted more responsibly with the money and you wouldn't have a huge misallocation of capital. And that, that's, what's, that's what's happened. Our system is just a complete viper's nest of moral hazard and and guarantees against bad business decisions. So to be honest with you, I'm not necessarily against a bail-in. I think that's fine. People, but make sure people are, are aware that this is what it means. It means if you keep your money in a bank over and above what the government's guaranteeing, and in fact, I'd even say get rid of the government guarantee. Let's impose real market discipline on these banks. You're going to have a much more efficiently operating capital allocation system. But okay. let's just say, okay, we're, you know, this is a kind where everyone on field day gets a ribbon, so the bank will guarantee 
you know, a hundred grand or whatever the number is right now. And, and, um, anything over a hundred grand, you're at risk to depositor. It'll make a lot of people think twice about it. And it, and it will, it will reduce the amount of systemic risk that's embedded in basically the moral hazard that's embedded in our system because of all the guarantees that have been tossed around really since FDR. <clears throat> but the banks really don't need the depositors money except. Oh, the hell they go wrong. You'd be surprised at how big the pool of depositor money is. A, a colleague of mine went through and looked at all the numbers and I guess they're, they're available either on the OCC quarterly report or I think it's, it's available somewhere on the federal reserve website. There's something like four trillion dollars sitting in checking accounts and in savings accounts at banks, in depositor accounts at banks, four trillion dollars over and above the amount that would be guaranteed by the government. So you're telling me the banks aren't don't need that four trillion dollars? That that's, that's four trillion dollars that's invested in mortgages that are gonna blow up, commercial real estate that's gonna blow up. Businesses that are going to blow up. No, you see point, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, but what I'm... Positive money is a very important source of financing for all banks. Well, I understand that, but they uh, but they also have QE at this point. So they don't actually need that money they're not, except they're, to they're, cover their back. The derivatives mess. The, the QE is there to keep the derivatives from, from blowing up, to keep these banks solvent. They still need depositor money in order to make money, you know, to, to the extent that they are making some net interest margin income, they, that's, they make it on depositor money. That's where, that's where they make it. I mean, they're paying you 0% on your checking account and what, a quarter percent on your savings account? And they turn around and they take that money and they lend it to some, some dude who takes out a jumbo mortgage and, and they charge him 4% on that jumbo mortgage. So they're earning that spread. The, the QE, the QE, the QEs, the cash that the banks were given by, from the Fed by money printing is all sitting in the Fed excess reserve account. It's there as a reserve pool against the next accident that happens. It's not, it's not invested. Now the Fed's paying the banks a quarter of a percent of interest on that money. But that, that, that's, that's separate from depositor money. For the banks, everyday operations, they need depositor money. The depositor money at these banks is huge. Because I'm talking about four trillion over and above what's guaranteed by FDIC insurance. So I mean, and you can go and I think you can probably look at on the Fed balance sheet what the total amount of, of of deposits are at banks. And it's a bank liability. It's a gigantic liability. But people don't look at it as a liability because everyone's used to, oh, I put money in the bank and then I go to the ATM and I get it out. It's mine. No, you've lent it to the bank. Right. Yeah, that that was uh, that that came to my attention. It's been about two years ago that when I make a deposit, this is when I really got uh, hopping mad over over having money in the bank at all because at that time I still was using the bank more a little bit more than I do today. What happened is, is that I found out that my deposit was in fact a loan to the bank. And it's actually, it's actually something that is taught in a basic high school business class, but no one pays attention to those. We're all throwing spit wads at the blackboard, <laughs> but um, yeah. And, and then I, it was covered in an economics, a financial economics course that I had in undergrad. Where they, I mean, it's 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 clear that you know when you when you when you give money to a bank, it becomes a liability of the bank, and it's 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 an ass, it's your asset, and it becomes the bank liability. It's really the fundamental problem with fiat currency fractional banking system is that. Any asset that any person in this country, other than if they have gold and silver, is a liability of someone else or some other entity. And so to the extent that there's risk with the person who you've given your money to that you're calling an asset, to the extent that there's risk on the other on the behalf of the other party, 
you're you're completely exposed to their their business judgment and and their ability to manage risk because if they blow up your asset blows up now the, the moral hazard is is enters into the system because the government's provided guarantees FD, it was, under it was under FDR that the, that the bank insurance idea was first introduced certainly social security was introduced under him yes but it's all these guarantees that have been layered into our system that have dumbed down our ability to judge risk so the, the long and the short of it is I am actually I'm fine with the bail-in because that's how it should be. If you want to have a private capital market system, if you give money to someone else to use, you should be at risk for that money, and it would force you to better evaluate what they're going to do with that money. And if you like what they're going to do with it, that money, then yeah, give it to them. But make sure that you're going to get compensated appropriately for what they're going to do with it. That's, that's your rate of interest. Well, there isn't any interest being paid today, is there? No, and that's that's another aspect in terms of how the Fed has completely dumbed down our entire system. They've taken the volatility out of the markets. They've taken any concept of, of risk out of the markets, and they've completely annihilated the number one red flag of risk, which is gold and silver. So everyone wakes up every day, and even if they have a feeling that something isn't right, they don't feel any risk in this system because the government's guaranteed everything for so long. I mean, that 0% interest rate is, is the most artificial thing in the world because they're basically saying, hey, there's no risk. There's no risk to short-term money. So you shouldn't get compensated for letting someone else use it. Well, that's nonsense. Yes. And th th what's ironic about that is the risk that's involved in our system is, is probably the highest it's ever been in, in the history of this country. Because as you and I said, you know, we both agree, we could wake up tomorrow and this whole thing is blown up. That's what risk is. <laughs> to be honest with you, short-term interest rate in this country should probably be north of 10%. I mean, what do you think the inflation rate really is? I think it's about nine to nine to twelve percent. Somewhere whatever it is, it's a lot higher than the than the one percent they're trying to tell us that it is. Yes. So that's just your. That's where you start with what the risk is, because if the inflation rate is ten percent, that means your dollar is devaluing by ten percent every day. So you need to get paid a minimum of ten percent just to stay even, just to compensate for the time value of money. Okay, and then on top of that, you need to get compensated for the risk of what the other person is going to do with that money. Well, you give it to the government, you know, the government, the government is, can print money to pay you back. Well, okay, I need to be compensated for the risk that they're going to print money. So pay me 10% plus another two or 3% on top of that. That should be your, 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 your overnight short-term rate. Not zero. When you give your money to one of these fricking oil shale companies, that's equity risk. You should be getting paid 10% plus probably another 15% for starters. That's, that's what risk means. That's how you get paid for risk. They've completely washed that concept out of the system. They've dumbed everyone down with 0% interest rates, government guarantees, with the, with the Fed safety net under the stock market. We're, we're like, you know, this whole country's running around like dumbed down zombies. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this is, this is that's by design, you know, three of the living dead. Well, that's that's by design. Yes, exactly. That is exactly. by design. Can't have a bunch of people running around using their critical thinking uh, processes. I want to circle back to this idea of bail-in because everyone out there makes it sound like it's a bad term. I'm su in support of the bail-in because if you're going to put your money in a bank, you should be aware of what the risks are. And if you're not aware of the risks, then, then, then you don't deserve to live in a free market capital system. And, and, and if you don't have a free market capital system, capital allocation system, then you're going to end up where this country has ended up, which is on the precipice. And no one even realizes it. No one realizes. That's, that's the whole problem. It's a big part of the problem is that no one. That's right. Notices. So, look, you know, zero hedge makes it sound like the bail-ins are a bad thing. No. I'm all for the bail-ins. 
people need to be more responsible with their money and how they throw it around and give it to other people. Well, and it goes back to what you what we were talking about a minute ago too, Dave, as far as people not understanding that they're that when they put money into a bank that that bank is now liable for that. That is a liability to them. That's that is the biggest part of the breakdown in my opinion. They might not understand that, but like I said, that information has been there all along in the education system because I remember specifically having a class in high school where they talked about that. But the problem is, is the FDIC insurance has, has, has basically acted as morphine on people where they don't have to worry about it because, oh, I'm guaranteed up to $100,000. So they don't even have to worry about it. Well, at some point, that FDIC insurance will be rolled back because FDIC will blow up. And if, if they let the if the FDIC blows up and they refund it with taxpayer money, then it's really just another bailout. It's not a bail in. The F, the FDIC. There's no way that the FDIC can cover one of these too big to jail banks. Well, I agree, and that that's why you know it'll be interesting to see what happens. If, the, when the first blow up happens and FDIC gets tapped out before the first blow up is restructured, see that's why I think it's it's it, it's still going to involve money printing because if they leave the FDIC intact, they're going to have to they're going to have to use taxpayer money to fund it. In in which case, it's still a bailout. It's a de facto bailout. It's not right. a bailout. Well, which I uh, say, get rid of FDIC insurance, hold bank management accountable for their actions based on whether or not you decide to put deposit money in there. Because when you when, when the government guarantees your money up to $100,000, they're basically guaranteeing what the bank does with that money up to $100,000 per account. How many people out there have a business where the government guarantees their business risk? Because that's essentially what it does. FDIC insurance is a de facto business risk insurance policy that, that bank executives get for free. Does that make sense? No. Not, not at all. If, if let's say you're a bank executive and I'm a depositor, and I say, okay, I can give you a hundred thousand dollars because my hundred thousand dollars, and you can do whatever you want with it. I don't care because the, the bank is the government's guaranteeing me that that hundred thousand dollars will be there whether or not you take it and 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 burn it, right? Right. Or use it for a really risky investment that doesn't work out, like derivatives. But so really, if you take me out of the equation it's the government guaranteeing you as the bank executive on that hundred thousand dollars go ahead and take that hundred thousand dollars and make as much money as you can off of it because we're guaranteeing it the depositor doesn't care what you do with it because we're guaranteeing it so we're we're guaranteeing we're guaranteeing you that it doesn't matter if you lose that money or not so that means that you can go and take and and take you know make Reckless investments to try and maximize your pay. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Right. So essentially, the FDIC insurance is basically, yeah, it's a depositor guarantee, but it's also it's also a, a guarantee. It's a business risk guarantee that bank that the management of the banks get for free. For free and at taxpayers' expense because yes, the FDIC exactly. is taxpayer funded. Exactly. So it's in essence, we're back to the bail outs. Yes. That's why I say, depending on what they, how they handle the FDIC, once it, once it goes bust on the first blow bank blow up, if they decide to replenish the FDIC account, there's no difference between that and a bailout. Right. It's just going through a different door. Exactly. God, I hate these guys. You have no idea, Rory. I hate them. I mean, I, I, and, I, no and I don't idea. use that word lightly. I don't use it very often, but I really, I really, I really hate them. I really hate what they, what they have done to our world and to our society. And it all comes back to these dirtbag criminals that they have, they have destroyed our, they, they really are destroying our world. And when they push that last button, that last financial atomic bomb button, and they siphon the retirement accounts, and they do the bail-ins for the banks, 
we will, we truly will be serfs at that point. It will be a feudal system at that point. Or am I wrong? Well, here's I mean, the we're, we're close to it now. Here's the catch. I think that we're going to be in World War III before that happens. What you just described, I think World War III will be in full motion before that happens. Well, it'll be the cover. Yes. But that's still coming. It, it is coming. It is, but who knows what, it, who knows what the whole thing is going to look like. People are going to be more worried about nukes flying. Um, than which, they are about whether or not they have to bail in their bank. <laughs> which is why I say that, that the United States will not be spared when the, when the ICBM start flying. When the ICBM start flying, there will be, the, the United States will be hit because they will need that, that level of distraction for the people. How many times? I don't know. How many times? How many bombs are going to hit here? I don't know. Where are they going to come from? Don't know that either. But I feel very confident that the lower 48 will be hit. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not even. I don't think. I don't think that far ahead. I just know that the bombs are going to fly. But as I have this quote on my blog post, one of the blog posts I did yesterday, the the, the policy of the U.S. government right now is take as much as they can from the middle class and distributed it amongst the oligarchic class. And when I say middle class, I mean anyone who's not wealthy enough to own their own federal politician. You're not wealthy by that definition. You're just another middle class serf. Right. Because you're not in on you're not you're in, in on the, the money. You're not in on the money grab. So yeah. that's the policy of the country. Suck as much wealth of the government. Suck as much wealth out of the system as you can before it collapses. And then this guy, Carl von Clausewitz, who everyone's heard the term, the phrase fog of war, he's attributed to that. He's a military theorist. His quote is, war is merely the continuation of policy by other means. So that's why the continuation of this suck as much wealth as you can out of the country policy is start a war. That's what they're doing in Ukraine right now. Correct. That's exactly what it is. I don't know where else to go from here, Dave. I really don't. Look, so. you just got to enjoy what you can, while you can, as much as you can, because the rest of this stuff, you have no control over, zero. Yeah, I don't have any control over it. I just pray for uh, a better day. I really do. I pray for a better day, and I and it, and it all comes back to gold and silver. And the reason that it comes back to that is because once a currency becomes corrupted, it is only a matter of time before... The entire system is corrupted, and when the entire system is corrupted, then the entire society becomes corrupt as well. And that is exactly where I see us today. I wouldn't say our entire society is corrupt. I would definitely say anyone connected with the government is completely corrupt. Anyone connected with big business, Wall Street, the banking system is corrupt. But, I mean, there's a lot of good people out there still. And there's a lot of people out there, you know, the common guy, there's a lot of people out there who are trying to do the right thing. The problem is they just, they don't realize they're, they're going to get swept away in the tides of history with what's going on. And that includes you and I. Well, maybe our entire society is not corrupted, but. Anyone who's, who's feeding off the system is entirely corrupted. Yes. The ruling and banking class. Is there anything happy that we can end this on? Yeah. Spring is coming. Spring is coming. Yay. Woohoo. Got to enjoy it. It might be the last one we have to enjoy. <laughs> well, that's true. Okay. Doomsday, Dave. Here, I'm trying to end on a positive note. And what do you do? 